Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me uh, for this little service of late evening to office on Friday, the 18th of June. You're really welcome. And again, thanks for tuning in. Now, this evening, the service can be followed on page 162 of a prayer book, a Church of Ireland prayer book, if you have one handy, or else um, if you have a look in the Friday night page of our website, you can download um, the little service order. Uh, it's available on the Friday night page of our parish website. So let's take a moment recollecting the Lord's presence with us as we approach him in this time of devotion together. Blessed be our God for all time now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you. Holy Spirit, comforter, treasure of all goodness and giver of life, come and dwell in us. Cleanse us from all sin and in your love bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Some words from Psalm 134. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by night stand in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen going to read to you now from uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side when he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went upon a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. And then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, Save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat and the wind died down, those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So let us pray. Loving Lord, as we think about this passage, we pray that you would increase our faith and help us to know truly that you are the Son of God and Lord of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, I often love stories of Peter and Jesus, the interactions that happen, and, you know, I just find it really, just really encouraging and refreshing, and, and you know, there's a lot of reality that happens uh, with, with Peter and Jesus, and a lot for us to, to just to learn from uh, as readers today. And tonight's passage involving Peter and Jesus is probably one of my favourites. And this passage of Jesus and Peter walking on water. And, you know, many years ago, uh, when I was a student at Theological College, this book uh, was a big one at the time. It's one that I, I read all those years ago. And, it, uh, you know, it really inspired me by John, John Orpork. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. Um, you know, if you're going on your holidays, whether it's to Portrush or... Um, I don't know, Tipperary or somewhere, uh, you know, we're not going far this year, but uh, if you're going somewhere, maybe it's a wee book to bring along with you uh, that you can read, uh, and, or of course you don't have to go anywhere to read, but uh, you know, it's a book maybe to look out for. Not sure if it's still in print actually, I hope it is, but if not, um, you know, maybe you can get it in Kindle or something like that, but it's definitely, uh, it was a great book and it challenged me immensely. I should read it again actually, I must get it out. Now, as we read our Bible passage of Peter and his friends getting into the boat uh, to cross the Sea of Galilee, we, we see that this is something that Jesus told them to do. Um, and as they were crossing the lake, they were Jesus stayed behind to do something that he often did. He stayed behind to pray. And we often see this in the Gospels. When Jesus was going to do something really special, quite often we find him praying beforehand. He, he shows us how important it is to pray. It's, it was part of his habit and it was something that, you know, that we would do well to do. Uh, we should learn from his example. And about three o'clock in the morning, one of the disciples noticed this shadow moving across the water towards them. 
and as it got closer, it was very clear that this was a, a figure of a person walking on the choppy water. The disciples were naturally terrified. Who would not be? And they cried out, it's a ghost in verse 26. They couldn't have thought it was Jesus because they thought he was back uh, praying on the mountainside. Um, as far as they knew, Jesus was back on shore. Um, so who would blame them for really being scared? But amidst all the fear, what do we find? Jesus calling out, take courage at his eye. Don't be afraid. We read in verse 27. So characteristic of Peter, who I can empathise with so much at times. He, 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 he spoke before he thought. And, uh, and he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. We read in verse 28. And so at Jesus' invitation, Peter walked on water. So there's a real challenge uh, for us to, to think about. In response to this you know his his response gives us a challenge to think about how it is that we are called in some way to get out of our boats and we're called to do so in faith and obedience in faith and obedience that's what we're thinking about just for a few moments so first of all we're thinking about how Peter stepped out in faith now the boat was the secure place all the storm choppy water or whatever the case may be where better would you want to be than the boat? Uh, the water was rough and the wind was strong. But And if Peter stayed in the boat, you know, he would have been safe. But if he stayed in the boat, he would never have known what was going to happen next. Due to Peter's faith in taking this big step, he actually walked on water. And he did through this through letting go and abandoning himself totally to the power of the Lord. And, you know, even amidst the scariness of doubts and fears and reputation and concerns about personal cost, I wonder if we need to take a step of faith, a step of faith towards Christ. I wonder if the wind and waves, the uncertainty of life cause us to stick with what we know and we fear stepping out in faith and putting our trust in the Lord personally for ourselves. As a consequence of his faith, Peter walked on water. And we might feel, you know what, we cannot be a follower of Jesus. We cannot live up to all the expectations. If we, you know, we've heard the message, come and follow me, receive mercy of our sins and all the rest. You know, we've heard that and we just sort of think, you know what, I can't follow through in that. I can't do that. Well, you know, we're not supposed to. We're meant to trust in the Lord Jesus. We're called to step out of our boats and allow him to do what he does in our lives. And we can achieve so much if we trust in him. And in his strength, empowered by his spirit, we can be followers of Jesus, despite all of our fears and our concerns. And some of us, perhaps tonight, need to take that step of faith. Say, Lord, I want to be forgiven by my sins. I want to live as a follower of you. I want to trust in you. And I pray that you'll help me to do that. And, and you know, help me to to walk through this journey of life with you, reliant upon you, following you, loving you and serving you. Maybe that's to this tonight is our night to take that step, to take that step in faith. Well, what happened next to Peter? Well, we see that the wind and waves and um, the realities of all of that kicked in and he got, he, got, he got scared and began to sink. And you know, as people of faith, people who've taken that step, that can be our reality, isn't it? The troubles of life, like the wind and the waves can cause us to doubt and fear. We all have things that cause us to struggle as we walk in faith. So what do we do? Well, Peter cried out, Lord, save me, we read in verse 30. He knew where he could get help from. He knew that Jesus did not, um, you know, was there and that he hadn't left him. And, um, and Jesus, of course, we see, didn't let him go. He, 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 Jesus rescued him. And there's nothing wrong with bringing our struggles as people who walk with the Lord to the Lord. That's what we should do. We should name our doubts and name our fears and, and ask the Lord to help us amidst all of that and not be afraid to do so. So we've seen here there's a challenge to step out in faith and go for it. We're also going to think about now how it is that we're to consider stepping out in obedience. As followers of Jesus, the first step is obeying uh, uh, and hearing and recognising God's call and obeying. And Peter asked the question, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. That's what he said. 
And if as followers of Jesus, we feel compelled to do something, it's good to test what we believe God is telling us to do. Before Peter acted, he had to make sure it was Jesus calling him and that the Lord was the one who was there and calling him. And, you know, we should be careful too. If we feel called to do something, we should be careful too. It's good to make sure. You know, sometimes we can make reckless decisions and then we can kind of try to rationalize it with a, a veneer of spiritual language. You know, um, people have often done silly things, that things that are even unbiblical at times because they believe that God has called them, or at least so they say. Um, but before we take any step of faith, we should always determine what is actual obedience and what is not. Something that we need to know about obeying God is that he always um, will ask us to do something probably that we'll feel kind of inadequate about. When you think about it, people whom we read of in the scriptures who are called by faith, God, um, uh, you know, called by God to obey, they often felt inadequate when God called Abraham to live ho leave home or Gideon to lead an army or Esther to defy the king or Mary to give birth to the Messiah, their initial response was, um, uh, you know, it was never, yes, I'm up for that challenge. I think I can handle it. The first response to God says, thing is genuinely, quite often fear. Um, it's not necessarily disobedience, but it's quite often fear. Um, and, you know, a God-sized calling generally involves fear. God's calling may seem pretty daunting at times, but he will equip those he has called to fulfill his calling. And um, as people who obey, we quite often do so with a real sense of fear that we feel inadequate and unable to do what, what's being asked of us. So perhaps we're the kind of people who like to stay within our comfort zone. Why does God call, call us to step out of them? Well, by doing so, actually our faith grows. When we look back and see what God has done in our lives, then we cannot but grow in faith. The evidence of his faithfulness is there. Just think of what Peter would have missed out on if he stayed in his boat. Something that Ortberg comments in his book um, that I find really intriguing is that both in scripture and present day, stories of water walking, of great things happening, ha quite often in, are in, um, you know, involving God's calling, quite often involve stories of prayer. And if we want to serve the Lord Jesus, if we want to hear his call, obey him and effectively walk on water, we need to be praying as individuals and as a church. Going back to the start of the passage of Jesus and then Peter walking on water. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was praying. So I know this is um, perhaps a wee bit um, complex in some degrees tonight, but as we conclude, I wonder, are we nearly comfortable in our boat? If we haven't submitted to Christ and decided to follow him this evening, perhaps we might consider stepping out of that boat of life as we know it and choosing to, to follow him. Be forgiven by him. Walk with him on life's journey to its eternal destination. Now, as we walk with Jesus, there will be days when things cause us to stumble, like Peter beginning to sink. But we can know that Jesus is there and he is there to call out upon. If not already, can I encourage you to step out in faith as a follower of Christ? But having stepped out in faith, might we need to step out in obedience? Is there something that God is calling us to do? I want to encourage us all, myself included, not to be satisfied with a comfortable Christianity. We may not feel that we can do a lot, but we can all pray and we can all see where it leads. And if you want to walk on water, the book tells us you've got to get out of the boat. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, tonight, uh, may it be that if not already, we might step out in faith in you, Lord. Step out listening to your invitation to come and walk with you. Walk with you in the journey of life. Lord, help us, if not already, to take that step and say, Lord, I want to be forgiven for my sins and I want to journey with you. I want to be your child. I want to be your servant. I want to live for you as my king. Maybe on that journey, Lord, if we're free, afraid and we're struggling, Lord, help us to know we can call out and ask for your help, Lord. We know that you are with us and that you love us and you will not let us down. 
And Lord, if there's a step of obedience that we need to take, if there's something that you want for us to do, help us to hear that call. Help us to recognize it. And soaked in prayer, Lord, may we hear what it is that you would call for us to do. Lord, bless us. Help us to have faith and help us to live in obedience. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, someone who uh, lived by faith and in obedience was Simeon. And uh, in uh, our little service order, we find what's called a nunctimidus. Um, something that, um, that Simeon declared as an expression of his love, devotion and faith and trust in, in his God. We read and say together, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord with all of our heart and with all of our soul. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all Christian people, that they may live in unity and truth. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all ministers of the church, for Archbishop John and all who lead us in faith, whichever church and fellowship that is represented as people who are part of this service this evening, as we pray for our church members, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for peace throughout the world, especially in um, Israel and Palestine. As we also pray for all governments, especially remember me for God, our Stormont Assembly, and amidst the complexities of our current situation. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our neighbours and for all of our friends. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hate us, as we also pray for those who love us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for refugees and prisoners and all exposed to the dangers of the travel. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all sick people, the sorrowful, and for the dying. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and the hungry may receive a just share. Lord, have mercy. And with thankfulness for all who have gone before us in faith, let us remember our brothers and sisters who have entered eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. And so together, in a moment of quietness, we bring before the Lord those petitions of our hearts, those things which we wish to offer before him tonight in prayer, in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray together as Jesus taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God bless this night forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the almighty and merciful God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless us this night and keep us Thanks again for being part of this little service tonight. Um, on Sunday morning, we've got a little special thing happening in church with a speaker from CMS, uh, Roger Thompson, is coming to speak and uh, just, just give us a wee bit more insight into our partnership with Shogway Diocese. So feel free uh, to come along on Sunday morning or tune in online. Uh, services as usual on Sunday morning, half eight in Crozier Hall, half ten in, the, in St Mark's and then seven o'clock in St Mark's as well. And uh, like I said, you're always welcome at the half, eight, half 10 service, of course, live streamed. And for all the news, have a look uh, on our website and on Pew News. Um, we'd love for you to be a part of whatever it is that you can be. But until then, 
God bless you. Have a great weekend and hopefully see you soon. Good night.